What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. Okay, so one of the questions that I've gotten a lot is like, what's the deal with cable? Can you like talk about cable or something? Okay, so we have like a tried and true origin video on cable that you'll find down in the description. But that origin video is really more geared towards like the hardcore comic fans as opposed to like the new guys. So this video is gonna be for those individuals who are just like curious about who cable is, like your average Redditor or somebody like that who's just like cable, like that sounds cool. I wonder who that guy is. Like this video is gonna get, this video is for you. So cable looks amazing when he's played by Josh Brolin. Like the way he's designed and how he looks is awesome. But Cable's whole story really dates back to like the 1970s and the 1980s uh, with the death of Jean Grey. So back when the X-Men first popped up, when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby first made them, you had uh, Cyclops, you had Jean Grey, you had Iceman, you had Beast, and you had Angel. And that was really it. Fast forward to the mid 1970s and those X-Men were basically merged with the new generation of X-Men, which was like Wolverine and Nightcrawler and Colossus and Storm and so on and so forth. Now, what ended up happening during this era of these X-Men teams being merged together is we got something called the Phoenix Saga. And it was basically this story by a guy named Chris Claremont that was designed to just make Jean Grey cool because she was just the, the worst character ever when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were originally writing her. She was like the, the weakest character. She always needed help and she was just kind of really more of like a hassle as opposed to a help for the team. And so at the end of the Phoenix Saga, Jean Grey just like flies into a star. Everybody thinks that she's dead. She like sacrifices her life and they're like, okay, Jean Grey's gone. She's out of the picture. What this does is it allowed Marvel to basically begin segueing the original X-Men out of the new X-Men team. So they basically had Cyclops and Morning leave the original X-Men team, or I guess leave the, the, the merged X-Men team. They had Iceman walk away. They had Angel walk away. They had Beast, the whole nine yards. They all basically just left. They were like, okay, we can't cope with this anymore more and they went off and they did their own thing. Fast forward a few years and we end up finding out that there is this villain named Nathaniel Essex, also known as Mr. Sinister. And Nathaniel Essex had come to the realization that if Jean Grey and Scott Summers ever had a kid, their kid would just be ridiculously powerful. It would just be a stupid powerful kid. The problem with this was that Jean Grey was dead because she was the Phoenix. And so what Sinister ended up doing is he cloned Jean Grey and he created a character named Madeline Pryor. Now when Jean Grey died and you know so on and so forth that was the end of her her, her death sparked life in Madeline Pryor, but Madeline didn't have any of the powers of Jean Grey. So Sinister considered her to be a failure and just kind of sent her out into the world and said, whatever, go have fun. So because of this, Madeline Pryor eventually comes across Cyclops while he's in mourning, still trying to deal with Jean Grey. But because Madeline is a clone, Cyclops doesn't know the difference because Madeline has all the memories of Jean Grey. And so to Cyclops, they're basically the same person. Now, of course, this leads to Cyclops learning the truth, but he doesn't care because it looks just like Jean Grey and she might as well be the same, you know, might as well be Jean as for all the memories and everything that she has. And so the two of them basically settle down. They start a life together. Madeline pops out a kid named Nathan. Now, what ends up happening here is Marvel forced the writer Chris Claremont to bring Jean Grey back. And that's when they brought in the whole thing about her body being held in stasis in a cocoon in Jamaica Bay. And the whole idea that like, well, the Phoenix wasn't actually Jean. It was the Phoenix force taking on the form of Jean and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, stuff that you've probably read in your Wikipedia articles and things you've been looking at online. But the fact remains here that what ends up happening is Cyclops bails out. He literally leaves. Madeline Pryor just abandons his wife and child and goes back to Jean Grey and then starts a team called X-Factor, which is basically the original X-Men with Cyclops, Jean Grey, Angel, Iceman, Beast, and uh, that's it, I think. So what ends up happening is we end up finding out that Sinister's motivation, of course, was to basically have Nathan Summers born so that this kid would be powerful enough to allow Sinister to achieve any of the goals that he wanted. What we also found out was that there is a villain named Apocalypse who realized what it was that Sinister was trying to do. So Apocalypse sent his own henchman after Nathan Summers, kidnapped him, and then infected him with a techno-organic virus. That's why Cable looks like he's half cyborg, because he's got this virus that's literally eating his entire cells. It's turning his tissue into metal, you know, into cybernetic stuff. The problem with this is that if it overtakes his entire body, it'll kill him. And so Cable has telepathy and telekinesis, but he constantly uses his powers to keep that virus from eating his body alive. But getting back to this rundown of an origin of sorts, I guess is what this has turned into. What ends up happening here is Cyclops realizes that Apocalypse kidnapped his son. And so what he does is he grabs X-Factor, he grabs the X-Men, and he grabs the Inhumans, and he travels over to face off against Apocalypse and get his son back. What ends up happening is Apocalypse like wrecks them all. It's one of the craziest things. Apocalypse 
Rose is just like, don't care, man. Like you're all going to get totally destroyed. But we end up finding out that the reason why Apocalypse kidnapped Nathan in the first place is because Apocalypse has to jump bodies in order to keep himself alive. And he wanted to put his spirit inside Nathan Summers because Nathan was going to be so powerful. Enter a chick from the future. We don't need to know her name. We don't need to worry about who she is. That'll just confuse the absolute daylights out of you. What ends up happening is this chick from the future says, hey, look, we can find a way to try to cure Nathan of the techno organic virus. And so ultimately Jean Grey and Scott Summers have to let Nathan go. Nathan goes into the future, something like 2000 years or 4,000 years or something like that. And he takes up residence with a group called the Clan Ascani. What ends up happening here is the Clan Ascani clones Cable and they say, okay, we have Cable who's infected with a techno organic virus. If we can't cure him, then we'll basically take his soul or his essence or his mind or whatever you want to call it. We'll take it out of the infected body and we'll put it in the clone body. But for right now, the clone's just going to sit there and it's just going to be in stasis, whatever. All right. This 4,000 years into the future, Apocalypse conquered the world. And so Apocalypse learns that Nathan Summers has been sent to the future. So Apocalypse sends his henchmen over to Nathan Summers again and tries to kidnap him. What ends up happening is a clan Ascani basically grab Nathan Summers. They run for their lives and Apocalypse ends up kidnapping the clone instead. Apocalypse raises the clone, names the clone Strife. That's where that char character comes from. Strife is stupidly powerful. It's nuts how powerful Strife is. But the fact remains here that Cable being, you know, living 4,000 years into the future, his sole mission, his sole goal is to constantly travel back into the past and to basically find ways to kill Apocalypse. That's it. What Marvel does with this character is they come along and they say, okay, so Cable is a guy that we can basically just have him fix everything because anything that's happening right now in Marvel Comics has happened in Cable's timeline. He's 4,000 years into the future. So like Civil War, the original Civil War story happened and Cable talked about that. The Avengers versus X-Men story happened. Cable talked about that. The Age of Apocalypse, you know, the Age of Strife, all these stories that took place, Cable knows about them all because they all happened during this time or, you know, before he ended up arriving into the future. So nonetheless, in terms of his relation to Deadpool, originally the two of them were enemies. What Marvel ended up doing is they actually launched a story called Cable and Deadpool or Deadpool and Cable, whatever you want to call it. And what ended up taking place is they actually grabbed these two guys and made them best friends. They made them besties. And it's like the funniest thing ever. It's, it's crazy to see these two guys bouncing off one another and being being silly. Deadpool's absolutely nonsensical and Cable tries to keep him in check. The crazy thing about this is that Cable's powers are, are kind of nuts to a degree because there's different forms of Cable. There's Cable, as we're going to see in Deadpool 2. There's Strife, who we've already talked about. And then there's a character named Nate Gray, also known as X-Man. Nate Gray is from the Age of Apocalypse. He was just genetically engineered by Mr. Sinister. But Nate Gray's powers were so extreme, his body couldn't handle it. His body actually burned out because of the powers that he had. He ended up turning into like pure energy. We did a video about him in terms of all the powers that he has and all the things that he could do. It was nuts. He was godlike in terms of the powers that this kid had. It was crazy. But Cable just has telepathy and telekinesis. He's extremely powerful when he focuses all of his energy on a particular thing. The problem is that if he stops focusing on keeping the techno-organic virus from eating him alive, then he'll basically die. The virus will totally consume his body. He'll look like Colossus and then he'll basically just die. And so that's the reason why his powers are always kept in bay. But what he lacks in abilities, he makes up for in like hand-to-hand -hand combat and technology. One of the coolest things he has is this body, uh, body slide package suite. And what it basically does is it allows him to body slide anybody, essentially teleport. And it's cool because in X-Men the Animated Series, they did that. He would be like body slide by two and then he would just teleport somewhere. But he can also time slide, meaning he can just jump back and forth through time at will. He uses technology in order to pull that off, but he just bounces back and forth in time, you know, whenever it is that he wants to do it. But now Cable is, is super cool. Uh, Cable's really, really cool. What you guys are going to see in Deadpool 2, assuming they stick with the Cable and Deadpool, you know, storylines and the kind of, you know, relationship we saw between the two, you're going to see what it amounts to like a buddy cop movie. And it's going to be amazing. Like, it's going to be really, really cool. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the coolest things that we've seen from a long time when it comes to like comic book superhero movies. I think it'll be pretty stellar. But anyway, I figured I'd throw this little bit of a video out there, you know, not, nothing too crazy, nothing too wild. We've covered a lot of Cable stuff here on my channel, his origin stories, his powers, the different versions of him. And so really, you know, you can 
find that stuff down in the description. That should give you everything you need in order to understand cable. But I just want to make a quick little video for all the new folks out there who were just curious about him in terms of what cable's capable of and what he can do and so on and so forth. But anyway, guys, uh, if you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. Do not forget Wednesday will be Avengers X Sanction when Cable fights all the Avengers, <laughs> when he beats the hell out of Captain America. And uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end, then I will catch you all later. Peace.